Hi, I'm Shailen with Readsy, and today we're going to be talking about the hero's journey. The hero's journey is one of the most common and well-trusted story structures. It's first arrived by Joseph Campbell's Monomyth, and then adapted by Christopher Vogler into the 12 stages we commonly see today. The hero's journey is visible in stories like Star Wars, Harry Potter, The Matrix, The Lion King, even movies like Arrival fit the hero's journey almost perfectly. Learning story structures such as the hero's journey is one of the most effective ways to expand and solidify your understanding of how structure works and how stories are shaped. But keep in mind that if you are using in the hero's journey, you don't have to follow it beat by beat or follow it perfectly step by step. It's better to give your story room to breathe and stray from the path a little bit than try to force your story to fit the hero's journey or any other structure. Like many story structures, the hero's journey is a three-act structure, with the first act taking up the first 25%, the second act taking up the middle 50%, and the final act taking up the final 25% of the story, which leads us to the first stage in the hero's journey ordinary world. So first, the story opens on the protagonist's everyday life. Many times, the protagonist is a young orphan boy on a farm, but it's okay to branch out. Here, the hero kind of just seems like an ordinary person. However, like most protagonists at the start of a story, there is something missing from the hero's life, even if they're not fully aware that something is missing, their life might be in kind of a point of stagnation, they might have this kind of unrest or longing, even if they are overall pretty content with their lives. Something is missing from their life. They don't really know what that is, they might not even know that something is missing, but the audience can tell that the character really needs some sort of change. Stage 2, the call to adventure. In most other story structures, this would be referred to as the inciting incident. Basically, this is what jumpstarts the plot. It's an interruption in the status quo of the character's life. The hero is beckoned into the storyline because of this change, but they don't really know what's going on yet, which leads into point three, the refusal of the call. The hero is just a lonely orphaned farm boy or some similarly average person. I mean, in Arrival, Amy Adams is like this really cool linguist professor already, but she's, you know, just out there living her life without any aliens, so. And so the hero refuses the call. I mean, that's probably a seemingly wise choice because like, who wants to get wrapped up in all of this crazy stuff? They don't think they have the skills necessary to complete the task. They doubt themselves, they're thinking, I'm just an ordinary person. So they refuse the call. But sometimes refusing the call causes even more problems for them than before. Step four, meeting the mentor. Enter Obi-Wan. It is time for the hero to meet their mentor. The mentor quells the hero's worries, provides them with wisdom, knowledge, information, and is finally able to draw them out of the ordinary world and into the world of the story. So that's the end of Act 1. Act 2 is the special world act, where the protagonist leaves their ordinary world and enters the world of the story. This can be a literal crossing into a new world, leaving of a home planet, entering into a fantasy world, or it could be more metaphorical, but generally in a hero's journey, especially in an epic genre like fantasy or sci-fi, we do experience a change in setting. So the fifth stage in the hero's journey is crossing the threshold. It's often a bit of a ceremonious occasion as the character leaves the world they've always known, everything that's comfortable and familiar, and ventures into the unknown to begin their journey. This marks the journey really beginning. This is when Harry Potter arrives at Hogwarts or some other seemingly monumental change in the world that really marks the beginning. Stage 6, tests, allies, and enemies. So this is often a bit of a longer beat in the story that kind of takes up a few scenes or chapters. Um, it's a bit longer, it's not just a single moment in the story like the crossing the threshold beat. This is a stage in the story where the hero is confronted with a bunch of obstacles and little conflicts along the way, makes friends, learns who they can trust, who they can't trust, acquires new skills, Basically, it's a bunch of little escalating conflicts that are all related to the main conflict, each one testing the hero, providing the hero with new skills, new tools, new knowledge. And each one is basically just preparing the hero bit by bit for that main epic battle that's going to happen at the end. It's important to consider with this beat that these little conflicts are the things that are later on going to allow the hero to complete their actual goal. Without all of these little trials that they face, they're not going to have the skills necessary to win in the final battle. 7. Approach to the innermost cave. This is when the hero really starts to near 
a sense of danger. There's kind of another threshold here where the hero has to take this leap into the unknown, again, similarly to the crossing the threshold beat. And just like in the refusal of the call beat, the hero might briefly doubt themselves. It's kind of a brief lull in action for the hero to think, and it really just escalates tension. Eight, ordeal. This is the most extreme and dangerous tests the hero has faced so far. Oftentimes, at this stage, the hero is faced with something internal, like their greatest fear or their greatest weakness that they have to overcome. The stakes are often life or death, but because of all the trials the hero has faced so far, the hero is able to overcome and survive in the end. Nine, reward, seizing the sword. Having survived the ordeal, the hero earns the reward. Sometimes it's a literal object, sometimes it's just crucial knowledge, but it's often the thing that they set out to find in the beginning. This marks the end of Act 2 and puts us into the final act of the story, which is the return to the ordinary world. So step 10 is the road back. The road back is just as dangerous as the journey there, but the hero has new skills and tools and so it doesn't need to take up as much space in the plot. It's just one beat rather than the majority of the story. The struggle now is making it home safely, and the hero often has to make a sacrifice Sacrifice. They have to realize that they have to put their life on the line for a greater purpose, something larger. 11. The Resurrection This is the moment of highest tension in the story that in most story structures would be referred to as the climax. This is when the hero faces the greatest danger they've faced throughout the entire story. Stakes are life and death, but not just for them. The fate of humanity or the entire world is on the line here. There's a lot of weight on their triumph here, so when the hero does succeed in the end, they often emerge having been reborn in some way. This is often a sort of spiritual rebirth, but sometimes it's quite literal, where the hero is literally resurrected in some way. But basically, the hero emerges from this battle changed, enlightened, or resurrected in some way, often with some newfound wisdom or knowledge. And finally, step 12 return with the elixir. The hero now returns to the world that we saw them in at the beginning of the plot, and they've brought with them some sort of healing. Sometimes it's literal healing for their land, sometimes it's just uh, knowledge or wisdom or some sort of spiritual healing. So now that they've survived the journey, the hero can return to their ordinary life, but more content than ever before. It's quite evident the hero has been changed. Things might seem like they're in a normal state once again, but both the hero and the world have been changed probably irreparably and probably for the better. So that's everything on the hero's journey. If you want more information or to revisit anything I said in this video, I'll leave a link to a blog post on this topic in the description. Till next time, bye.